In lesson two, we looked at how to use Bernoulli's equation to work out the velocity in a pipe fed by a reservoir based solely on the water level in that reservoir. This was a fairly straightforward method, but in order to solve the equation, we had to assume we'd had no loss of any useful energy anywhere in the system. In lesson three, we started to look at processes such as friction, viscosity and turbulence which will lead to losses of energy in real systems. And we noted that these losses will become more significant the longer the pipe, as the longer the pipe, the more friction, viscosity and turbulence the flow will experience. In this lesson, we're going to combine the estimate of head loss we looked at in lesson three with Bernoulli's equation that we looked at in lesson two to see if we can come up with a more accurate prediction of the velocity and any other parameter in Bernoulli's equation for systems where we can't neglect losses. So let's start by thinking about a standard reservoir pipe system. Here we have a constant head tank with a water level of 209 millimetres or 0.209 metres feeding a small pipe. The water level in this tank is going to drive water through this pipe and we can measure the discharge in the pipe using the volumetric method discussed in lesson 1 part 1. Here I collected 0.9 litres of water in 4 seconds. Which gives a discharge of 0.225 litres per second. So in the system, we have 0.23 litres being pushed through this pipe every second as the 0.209 metres of potential energy in the tank is being converted into kinetic energy in the pipe. We said several times in the last video that the longer we make the pipe, the more losses we're going to get in the system due to friction viscosity and turbulence. So let's make this pipe a bit longer and see what happens. I've now installed a 1.25 metre pipe on the end of the tank. Everything else in this example is exactly the same. The tank still has a water level of 0.209 metres. The pipe is still unrestricted at the outlet and open to atmosphere but we've now got a relatively long pipe compared to the first example. And this pipe is going to lead to losses in total head as the fluid makes its way down the pipe. So let's start by seeing what the difference is. Let's repeat the measurement of discharge and see what we now have. With the longer pipe installed, I collected 0.8 litres in 5 seconds. Which gives a discharge of 0 0.16 litres per second. Just by increasing the length of the pipe by about 1 metre, our discharge has dropped by about 30%. We can now really start to see the effects of the losses that we're experiencing along the length of this pipe. So to think about how we could predict this new discharge, let's start by trying to analyse this system using the method we looked at in lesson 2, assuming conservation of useful energy. Let's apply Bernoulli's equation between the water surface of the tank and the pipe's outlet. So point number one is the water surface of the tank, and point number two is the pipe's outlet. As always, at point number one we can cancel the pressure head as the water surface of the tank is open to atmosphere and we're assuming atmospheric pressure is zero and we can cancel the velocity head as we can assume the movement of the water surface of the tank is negligible compared to the movement of water in the pipe. And at point number two we can cancel the elevation term because the pipe is at the base of the system 
and we can cancel the pressure head because the pipe is open to atmosphere and again we're assuming atmospheric pressure is zero. So when we're assuming conservation of useful energy, we can see that the total pressure head at point 1 is all potential energy in the form of elevation, and the total pressure head at point 2 is all in the form of velocity head, and we're assuming these two pressure heads are equal. So if we solve for velocity, we get a velocity in the pipe of 2.02 meters per second, which corresponds to a discharge for a pipe with a diameter of 15 millimeters of 0 0.358 liters per second. So as we can see, using the assumption of conservation of useful energy really doesn't work well for systems with even moderately long pipes. For a pipe that's just 1.25 meters long, We've predicted a discharge of 0 0.358 litres per second using Bernoulli's equation assuming conservation of energy, whereas the actual discharge that we've measured is 0 0.16 litres per second, less than half of the value that we've predicted. And this error is only going to get worse the longer we make the pipe. The reason for this error is because the total pressure head at point 0.2 is not going to be the same as the total pressure head at point 1. We start with a total pressure head in the system of 0 0.209 meters that's going to drive this flow. But we're then going to get losses in total pressure head within this system. We're going to get a local loss as the pipe exits the tank. And this will take away total pressure head. And we're also going to get continuous losses as the fluid makes its way down the pipe due to friction, viscosity and turbulence. And this will also take away total pressure head from our system. And the longer we make the pipe, the more total pressure head we're going to lose in the pipe. The total pressure head that we end up with at point number 2, that will be converted into velocity, will actually be a lot smaller than the total pressure head at point number 1. The question is, using the theory we looked at in the last video to quantify these losses, can we make a modification to Bernoulli's equation that will account for the losses in this system. The problem we've had is that we're assuming that the total pressure head at point 1 is the same as the total pressure head at point 2, when in fact we would have lost energy between point number 1 and point number 2. But we can very easily correct for this by minusing the total losses in the system from the initial pressure head at point 1. So the final pressure head at point 2 will be the initial pressure head at point 1 minus the total losses in the system. So let's now apply our new version of Bernoulli's equation accounting for losses between point number 1 and point number 2 in our system. When cancelling the terms in Bernoulli's equation, we can follow exactly the same procedure as normal. We can cancel the pressure and velocity head at point 1, and the elevation and pressure head at point 2. Which leaves us with elevation at point 1 minus total losses equals velocity head at point 2. The next thing we need to do is to think about what losses we might have in this system. Thinking back to the last video, we know we're going to get a local loss at the tank connector 
as the pipe exits the tank. And we know the equation for a local loss is the local loss coefficient k times by the velocity head. So we can minus this local loss from our starting total pressure head. We also know we'll get continuous losses in the pipe due to friction, viscosity and turbulence. Again, in the last video, we looked at an equation and a process that we can use to calculate the total continuous losses along the length of pipe. So we can minus the continuous losses equation from our total pressure head. So now we have an equation that accounts for all our possible losses in the system. We've accounted for local losses of head at the tank exit and the losses due to friction and turbulence along the 1.25 meters of pipe length. So let's try to solve this equation for velocity at the pipe's outlet. We know Z1 is 0.209 meters because we can read this off the tank's gauge. The local loss coefficient for the tank connector in this system is 2, so we have k. A reasonable estimate of the friction factor in this system is f equals 0.03. And I've got this friction factor by doing the best estimate possible using a Moody diagram. So this gives us the friction factor term f. The pipe length is 1.25 meters, so we have l and the diameter of the pipe is 15 millimetres, or 0.015 metres, so we have D. So we actually have all the variables apart from the system's velocity. The only issue is we have three velocity head terms, which means we need to do a little bit of reworking of this equation before we can solve it. So let's start by putting all the velocity terms on one side of the equation. Because this is a steady flow and the pipe diameter is not changing, all of the velocity terms will be the same, so we can simply factorise the velocity terms. And then rearrange so the velocity head is the subject of the equation. We can then rearrange again so that actual system velocity is the subject. And now all we need to do is plug in the numbers. Which gives us a final velocity of 0.86 meters per second. The final step is to apply the continuity equation to get the system's discharge. By timesing the velocity by the pipe's area, we get a final discharge of 0.153 liters per second. So we can now see that this procedure is predicting the system's discharge almost perfectly. We measured the discharge as 0.16 litres per second. And we've predicted the discharge as 0.153 litres per second. So we now have a method that can predict the velocity and discharge of a system based solely on the water level in the supply tank and an estimate of losses in the system. We've actually made very few assumptions in this process. The friction factor can be found from the Moody diagram, and the K value that I used for the tank connector was measured completely independently of this exercise. 
So this process can predict our discharge extremely accurately along a pipe of 1.25 meters of length. However, this is still a very small system. Our pipe in this example is long compared to the tiny pipe we started with, but a 1.25 meter long pipe is still nothing compared to the lengths of even moderate water distribution systems. So the question is, does the calculation still work for very long pipes? In the next video, we're going to see how this process stands up when applied to a pipe that's not just 1.25 meters long, but is 117,000 meters long.